what is going on guys welcome back to the channel for those of you that are new my name is William Bootsy Blanding and I am the creator of this channel Chennai Business hope to be creator of many more channels to come now for those of you who've been following me a while good news more good, good news just keeps going you know what I mean? Um, finally, I got a hold of somebody to start the process of putting me on payroll as an employee for my own business. The only thing that I was not really concerned about, but they don't give a authorized signature on the check. So I'm still the authorized signature on my own check as the owner but i mean it still works she showed that you'll still be able to get a car a house but in a, in a case of a house they're going to ask for information about my holding company anyway another thing for you guys that are new i'm doing all this on a holding company c corp in what the state of wyoming but i actually live in Connecticut so I will have to pay Connecticut tax as an employee but there's no state tax in Wyoming on the corporate level so yes yeah, C Corps is double taxation I'm not a tax professional this is for educational purposes only you know and um, so it's C Corp is double taxation but there's always tax advantages, guys. There's going to be tax advantages for every entity. And for those of you who've been following me a while, I'm going to set up a new LLC. And that's later going to be turned into a S-Corp. But we're on our way. Believe it or not, that's important to be on payroll. Because that gives you more legitimacy. I went with the company called Paychex. Um, it makes us look really more professional. Because now when you go in, you go get an apartment or you go get a car, boom, I can print out the actual pay stub and the money's going to my personal Chase account. And if you've been following me a while, you know I got all that SBA funding already in my Chase account. And my business corporate account is in Navy Federal. So it looks good because the paycheck as the employee goes to my Chase account, you know, and keep in mind, I'm able to move some money over from my Chase to my personal Navy Federal account, and then from there, I can put some back in my business, and it's, it's daisy chaining around, but it's legal, and getting on payroll just makes it look, look more official, more legal, because the IRS is going to see the IRS likes to see other companies dipping in your money to control how you spend your money. In my opinion. So it makes it look more legit. I'll be able to qualify. Really, this is all waiting for it to move. And my score to go up, which should be happening next month. My score should go up. I paid to get some stuff removed. Um, so my score should be up by next month. And I'll have legitimate pay stubs. The only thing I was concerned about is your payroll starts from that point. So it looks like you just started as an employee from that point on. And people are going to question that, but I'm the owner. So I can just simply say, yeah, I've been business for this long. You know what I mean? And then I have, keep in mind, I have all this SBA funding sitting in my personal Chase account. So if I have to print out my personal Chase account and be like, use that as more leverage, that's what I'm going to do. This is my year, guys. This 2022 is going to be my year. Now, I know this is left field, but the housing market sucks right now. So I was thinking about that. It doesn't even make sense to try to buy anything right now. I'm just going to get into something small, rent it out. Um... I'm using a UPS address 
for my actual personal address. And I'll give you reasons why I'm doing that. You'll come to find out when you're building out your personal credit and doing all this stuff, if you keep changing your address, it actually affects your credit in a negative way. It affects your credit in a negative way. So I found that if I just keep one central location for my home address, because I'm bouncing all over the place, you know, that helps with the um, the credit building stuff on your personal side. One address, no matter where I move in Connecticut, that's my home address. Now, certain situations, I'm still gonna have to get mail to my, let's say it was, if I bought a house, I'm gonna still have to get some personal mail from the bank or whatever like to that location so they know I also live there. You know, if if uh, one of them FHA loans or whatever, they want to know that's your personal address, but you can still keep this address to qualify and that's where all your credit cards and everything go and that mail could be forwarded to you. Now that works for your personal address, but it doesn't work for your business address. You have to have a real business address, which I found technically you can even purchase. Yes, I can go out and purchase a retail location use that for a business location and then market it for several people kind of like ups like the ups stores do but for some reason ups stores they come up as ups stores but if you marketed this for a business address for other people it doesn't come up the same way the ups store comes up and now you can market it that as a virtual address i just thought about that guys I could literally do business services location and market, okay, you can come here and get your business mail address here. They used to do this back in the day before I got into the cell phone industry and it worked. Like you have regular like cell phone stores that like mailboxes and it worked. It's an old school way, but it works and that's an extra revenue stream. So I actually thought about, yeah, maybe I should do something like that give you guys hit me in the comments if you're in Connecticut would you like like a local business services where you can walk in and speak to somebody but to me like me you know at best I'm gonna be a certified business consultant I'll get the license for that but that doesn't make me a CPA or a licensed professional but you come you can come in locally Consult with me on certain things. And we can also offer you services like mailbox service. Um, many crafty ways to get your business off the ground like I've done. And this is all trial by error, guys. I had a brick and mortar business back in the day. But I didn't know about the corporate credit hustle. I really didn't. I didn't know you can actually create corporate credit and go after whatever you want to do. And um, I know I'm all over the place, but the LLC that I'm going to use for my media company, I decided I'm also going to kind of use that to brand the car rental business as well. But what I'll do is I'll make that an offshoot. Like my company is going to be called Blaine Drake, but I might do just Blaine Drake rentals. And then make that an offshoot and then make it a separate LLC, but under my, which will eventually be my escort. Cause I want to keep the same branding. I got a logo for it already. You know, I don't want to cr keep creating too many entities. It's, it's still a new entity, but it'll kind of be like my escort is a holding company. And then we create the other LLC to do the car rental business, kind of the same name, but a separate LLC. So my S Corp is going to be another holding company. Um, now my current holding company is a C Corp and Navy Federal. That's just really designed to collect money. Through marketing efforts, um, World Crypto Life money, that's going to go in that holding company. Um, if Z Tegrity ever pull off anything, that's money that's going to go into that company. Um, now, as far as integrity, for those of you who know what's going on, you in the black table. 
at this point, it's safe to say we're not going to see any corporate credit. Let's keep it real. So we're looking to next year, which is right around the corner. I'm patient enough because I've got my other hustles going. But this is what I'm looking at. If they pull it off and they set that entity up and the corporate credit starts coming in, let's say right off the rip, they get me 500 k I'm going to take at least 100 k bring it over here to this holding company, my original holding company, and Navy Federal, and, and send it as if payment. Payment for services. Boom. $100,000 right there. Because I'm already on payroll over here. They just got me this stuff going. I don't want to be on payroll over here yet. This is just the corporate credit that they're supposedly going to get us. I'm going to send about at least $100,000. Boom. Now my salary is taken care of for the next two years. You know, and then anybody I want to hire, I will hire them under that brand. That's another thing. I'm not going to hire any employees physically under my escort. If I was going to pay somebody to do, say, the car rental business, under that, under my escort, Blandrake will do a sub baby LLC. And it will say that runs a rental business. That will pay the employees from that account or that LLC. Because you want to be the only employee of your escort, the way I understand it. I'm not a lace professional, but the way I'm understanding from these CPAs is you want to keep it where at the most you have you and your wife is the only employees from your escort. But that escort can be a holding company and own subsidiaries. And then I also learned recently your S-Corp should be in the state you live in. Now, that's going to change if I move. So I'm thinking of moving out of state, somewhere out of Connecticut where it's actually warm, like Atlanta or Florida. I'm feeling Atlanta. Even though it, it, my gut is telling me maybe you should go to Florida, I'm feeling Atlanta. But then again, I'm thinking Florida. Hit me in the comments because I don't know which one it is. I'm feeling it's got to be out of Atlanta or Florida. Is going to be where my eventually final homestead is going to be. I'll let you guys decide. But, yeah, so I won't pay any employees directly from your escort. Your escort should only be, you should be the only employee from your escort. But see, now that I have my holding company is actually creating some stuff and I got some money flowing through it. You know, that's going to qualify me for more corporate credit from my first holding company. That's another reason why I'm going on payroll. Because now I have proof. Even though I didn't file my taxes yet, I have proof that I'm an employee. Now, 2022 hits. Even though I'm a year and a half behind, I'm going to do my taxes for the business. And I'm going to, the goal is to try to show a profit. Even if it's only a five to 10 grand profit, I'm going to show a profit because that's going to qualify me to get more credit. So, and a lot of the money I'm putting in technically should not even have to be taxed. So you got to realize my hustle. I'm willing to spend some of my own money to pay taxes I really don't have to pay because this is loan money. A lot of this money from grants and loans. Technically, I don't have to pay tax on it again. You see what I'm saying? This money was not supposed to be taxed. But I'm willing to pay some tax just to show a profit. Just so I can get qualified for mortgages, cars. You know? This the game. This is how you got to play the game. You got to spend some money to make more money. So yeah, I'm spending some money that shouldn't be taxed to get qualified so I can get more funding. Um... A good tip, I signed up with nav.com, nav.com, not Navy Federal, just nav.com, is a good resource because they give you a payment experience on your business credit. You pay so much a month for their package that allows you to see your scores and business information, and they report that to DMB and Experian on the business side, and they give you your personal advantage scores. 
not your FICOs, but your, I think it's TransUnion and Asperian um, Advantage scores. Kind of like your Credit Karma scores. So right now I see I'm in the low sixes on my personal. But hopefully next month, that's going to jump up to at least, all I need is a 680, guys. I originally thought I needed a 740. A 680 will get me into a house and a reasonable car loan. Because I want to start stunting on y'all soon. No, I'm just joking. But I want to start showing you that all this progress is doing something. I want to show you guys that I got a decent car to drive. I want to show you guys that I'm not buying a house, but I'm going to have a nice, more upscale apartment that I'll actually show you all over. Like, this place is a mess. I don't want to even show you this place. But when I get the nice place, I want to better show you the kitchen and... You know, show you the nice car I'm driving, all from efforts on working on my holding company. And now the holding company is technically paying for me to set up my escort. I'm taking funds from that business and invested it into my media company. And the media company will probably own just car rental business. And there's a lot of tax advantages with escorts. You talk to any tax, even the morons in the tax game will tell you escort. You are spending money. You're spending about, I believe, two grand a month just to maintain it. But it saves you if you're making, let's say you're making 50 to 100K a year. It's going to save you because half that money you don't have to pay any tax on. So a lot of tax strategies with escort. And then this tech company. For those of you who have been following me, I want to build out a really huge tech company that's going to own some real estate. Um, I want to bring on real partners, so it's going to be a good time to contact me when I get to that stage. That won't be till next year. I don't want to kill myself and try to rush and do everything at once because my brain is already all over the place, y'all can tell. So the tech company, hopefully sometime in uh, next year, We'll do that. Um, basically, the Z-Tegrity corporate funding could fund that fully. They could fully fund my tech company. It could actually own a part of that tech company. So I can even have it where that company owns this new technology company. Um, I want the technology company to um, be something big like where you want to get the masses want to invest in it because i'm thinking about doing something around cryptocurrency so that new tech company i want it to be a nice technology company i'm going to spend like two grand to get a nice fancy website it's going to be a big investment but i really think that's going to pay off because the technology company you know you can get more money than god you can get banks involved I mean, if, if you do it right, you can even get Coinbase involved. You can get some of these Coinbase exchanges, like these different cryptocurrency exchanges, to invest in your technology company if it has a good concept. And I think I got an idea for a concept. I don't want to reveal it yet, but um, I think I got an amazing concept for a technology company that no one's done but everybody needs. Put it this way. It will in some ways be competing with platforms like YouTube, Facebook. It's going to compete with them, but still use them. So it's going to be able to use social media to bring awareness to our company, but it's going to be competing with them because I'm going to do something social media based let's just say that because and the reason why i want to go into and stay in social media because already my s corp is going to be a media company but i think social media is if you combine social media and technology i believe there's nothing you can't do i've already seen it you know i'm 50 years old and i've seen the progression of me that 
technology's forced me to adapt. I'm forced to make a YouTube channel, guys. I'm an introvert. I was forced to come out here and do this because I know the power of social media and I know what it could do for my future companies. So I'm actually forced as a 50 year old man to come out here and do social media. And I was afraid of this stuff, but I'm forced to do it because I know video is, a, is the future and social media is always gonna be here. It's always gonna change, there's always gonna be new platforms, but why not get in the game and become one of the platforms? You know, it's not going to be so much direct competition with YouTube. I would say geared to competition with Facebook. And we're not even going to be on Facebook's radar, guys. Because, you know, it's going to be so small. But if you're smart, you get companies like Facebook to invest in your company. Now they see it as you're not really in competition and because they have a, a ownership. And I'm just going to make sure when I set the company up, I have enough personal chunk ownership in the company so I can't be voted out. Because I do want to take this public. So I want to take this public. I want to create a cryptocurrency for it. Um, and just sit back and just be, you know, a founder and a member in a real company that's generating massive amount of money. And then if I can get some big players involved, there's no way you can't tell me that this can't be a million dollar idea. It could be a million dollar idea. I just got to, the, the only thing, I only way I could protect myself is to set it up legally the best way I can where I have control. I have some type of ownership control. Whether that be the biggest shares or you know, I want something to take care of my entire family forever. And I think it's in the technology arena. Now, as an extra backup, this is how my mind works. So you should be taking notes. This is some good stuff. As a backup, if this will say the technology company doesn't blow like I want it to go, go I want to do a nonprofit for affordable housing. Because in the Hartford area where I'm where I'm at. It's guaranteed home run because Hartford on the local government side is just going to give me money and say, fix up these nasty properties. You know, sorry, Hartford, but a lot of Hartford is just run down. They just wait for somebody to come in with money and just fix stuff up, you know, so easy play. That should be started before the tech company, because that's going to take like probably a year to get the exemption. But we could start promoting it through, um, you know, there's platforms we could promote it where we're like fundraising platforms and stuff. So start fundraising for it. So we could, with just through fundraising for it, before we even get the exemption, start collecting money. And we finally get the exemption. And then the help of the local government in Hartford, we should just be able to just throw properties at them. You know, and then I believe nonprofits can invest in for profit companies. So that nonprofit could invest a share into this for profit company, and then the nonprofit could pay me a six figure salary. Easy. Easy. And then you could leverage yourself so you always maintain control. Let's, let's say that company does blow up and becomes bigger than Facebook by accident. If you have your companies invest in it and have what have equal like separate shares, like I can have my holding company, my S Corp, and and then I can have my nonprofit all invest as companies in that new public company. Now I have some a uh, controlling shares. See what I'm saying? You gotta think about the stuff ahead of time. Because if the company just does blow up, if it fails, it fails. It doesn't really affect you. It's still used for some write-offs. But if it blows up, you want to have that leverage. And then while I'm building this stuff out, don't think I'm doing this alone. 
I know I'm going to have to be like Glendon Cameron and go out and hire people. And But you got to crawl before you can walk. So right today, I'm just excited. I got on payroll. I'm able to progress to the next steps. Because getting on payroll was an important step because it kind of legitimizes me to the banks and the other lenders. Because I didn't file my tax return yet. And um, the beauty is next year june of next year my holding company my original holding company will be two years old guys if i just keep on the course i'm going i will actually have because two years is what they look at for any funding any funding products so once i hit that two year mark all i gotta do is show some profits you know like this first year i could just show twenty thousand the following year, I can show thirty thousand. As long as I'm going up, they'll give me all the money that, uh, in the world. But again, I'm just using this holding company just to collect funds. The S corp is when I want to start doing the active stuff. I want to get into the car rental stuff. I want to, you know what I mean. But if you're interested in continue following my journey, just subscribe. Just subscribe right now. Check the links below. I got some great information. Um, Check out World Crypto Life, guys. If you ever wanted to get in cryptocurrency and you don't understand it, they got education in the platform to teach you step-by-step step about cryptocurrency. And then if you just invest just as little as $100 and purchase their coin in six months, you're going to see guaranteed profits. Guaranteed profits. They work with... They do have a partnership with Binance, which you know the United States has given Binance a problem. This company, World Crypto Life, is located in the States. So by partnering with them, I think Binance is trying to use some crafty strategies. They have a, a deal, a division of this company has a deal with Bank of America. I think it's IM Fin Services has a relationship with Bank of America. So we're gonna be able to access our money with a real Bank of America business debit card. You'll build a withdrawal up to $1,000 a day. So this is kind of a way of moving your crypto money through a business, you know? There, and there's definitely gonna be some tax advantages with World Crypto Life. You know, I don't wanna get into too much, but trust me, there will be some deals and there's some legitimacy in this because it's not just network marketing. World Crypto Life is their network marketing arm, but they have their own coin exchange. I am exchange, you know. So I'll, I'll link some information about it below. Just go to that video, and then that video will explain more what I'm talking about. But um, if that blows, guys. I basically could just take that money and just put it in my holding company and just I don't even have to like create any way to make funds to fund the company and I truly expect in six months for this company to at least bring in a steady form of income like a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars steady every month that's how big of an opportunity I think this is and I know some people in Z-Tegrity might feel some type of way because they only want me to promote Z-Tegrity. But this is just a bigger opportunity. You know? So check the links below. And again, I'm happy and finally on payroll so we can start making some stuff happen. Uh, and I just want to thank you guys for your support so far. The loyal people. You know, and you haters, go ahead. Click the dislike if you want now and uh nasty comments i'm just gonna delete the comments so i don't know why they do it and the scammers be careful they're scam i didn't know i'm you know you when you start getting big when you start getting scammers like i'm starting to get scammers that leave comments they're usually talking about telegram uh telegram or whatever yeah i'm starting to get scammers now guys crazy but thank you for your time i'll catch you guys in the next video Subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll catch you next time.